I've gone 10 miles on two kilowatt hours. That is crazy. All right, so today I wanna to talk about used Teslas, used EVs, and the range they have after lots and lots of miles. My 2018 Tesla Model 3 dual motor, long range, all wheel drive, has over 101,000 miles, almost 102,000 miles uh, on it. And uh, I'm gonna be honest, I'm really, really impressed with the range and efficiency that it still has after that many miles. Let's be honest, the largest problem, the largest hesitation for folks who are thinking about going EV or going electric is range anxiety. I totally get it. It still gets me sometimes and I catch myself driving on the highway, checking my screen way, way, way more often than I really should be. But at the end of the day, these batteries, especially in Teslas, are built to go 150,000 miles, 200,000 miles and still be useful day to day. Now, will they still have the same kind of initial efficiency and range? and capacity as they did when they were brand new? Absolutely not. But think about it. Your cell phone, after two years or so, the battery doesn't last all day like it used to. Batteries degrade over time. Well, likewise, in a car, that is the same thing. But if you can get past not having 400 or 500 miles of range at your disposal anytime you want, like in a gas or an ice car, then EVs are totally fine because let's be honest, other than that one road trip a year to the beach or to the mountains or to some crazy place out of state, how many people need 400 miles in one shot? Not too many people because that's the largest thing everyone asks me is how do you travel? How do you go far away? How do you go anywhere outside of town? Um, It's pretty easy. You just build in your charging whenever you're going to the restroom or getting something to eat. And that 20 minutes of getting something to eat or using the restroom or waiting in line for a drink, yeah, you charge during that time and you never know that you're building in charging time. They are still long road trip friendly and they still maintain and keep their efficiency if you maintain the battery and take care of it over 100,000 miles. So I won't bury the lead anymore. My car here has 101,970 miles on it. Right now I'm sitting at 76% charge and it shows 199 miles as my range. Now when this thing is totally charged up, it has 264 miles of range available, down from around 300 whenever it was brand new. If you divide 264 as the full capacity right now by 310, you get about 85% capacity. So over almost 102,000 miles, my car has retained 85% of its battery capacity. Now the caveat there again is that the 264 that the car shows, you're likely not going to get that. You'll get like 235, 240 maybe under normal human beings driving because, you know, the car overestimates. You've got to be going like 60 miles an hour with a tailwind down a hill to really get what the car actually shows. So over 102,000 miles, my car has maintained a lot of its battery capacity, which I think not enough people talk about. So many people question, what does it cost to replace a battery? Yeah, I can't get an EV because, oh my God, it's going to be too expensive to get that battery replaced. What's the cost of that? I don't know. How many times do you buy a gas car and wonder, what is the the engine replacement cost. You largely don't have to ever do that. Anyone who's had a battery replaced, it's mainly because one of two things. They've reached the 200,000, 250,000 mile mark or they damaged the battery because they over supercharged it with, you know, DC fast charging or they dented it by going over a ramp or a bump or a curb or something and the battery was damaged and had to be replaced. No one I know, and I've met a ton of Tesla people and I belong to a ton of Tesla groups online, no one I know at 50,000 miles has had to have their battery replaced. Maybe someone somewhere has and they got a lemon or something like that, but by and large, that is not the experience of Tesla EV owners. The batteries do not need to be replaced like everyone out there, you know, in the uh, Twitterverse and online trying to scare you would make you want to believe. That is just not the case. You start your day with a full tank of gas because guess what? You charge at your house. How many people have a gas pump at their house? I'm waiting. Yeah, none. No one has a gas pump at their house. Everybody almost everybody has electricity and the capacity to charge a car at their house. All you have to do is just get past that little hurdle and that barrier in your mind of range anxiety. And oh my gosh, what does it mean uh, to have a battery instead of an engine be the driving force of your vehicle? So let's get into the numbers here uh, on my current car. I charged about 10 miles ago. I've gone about 10 miles since my last charge and it's 60 degrees out today and I'm getting 172 watt hours per mile, which is amazing. I have not been going 
going highway speeds. It's just been kind of on back roads getting down here to where I'm shooting this video for you. So 172 watt hours per mile is phenomenal. Anything under 250 is just a win in my book. If I was on the highway, this would be well into the 200s for sure. But what you want to keep in mind too is that, you know, the, the cold weather especially, that is the only problem that I share with folks whenever they ask me, what do I think about EVs, Teslas, and just driving electric in general? Winter weather, winter months in the cold, they are not your EV's friend. They definitely, definitely cut into your efficiency. I would say overall, you only get about 75% efficiency in cold weather. You know, if 70 degrees is where EVs operate the best and the most healthy environment is around 70 degrees, I would say that uh, in 30 degrees, 35 degrees, less than 30 degrees, you definitely lose about one quarter of your battery's efficiency and capacity. Because think about it, the battery is colder because the wind whipping underneath the car and everything like that the battery is colder inherently you've got to use the heat to keep the cabin warm and warmed up so that uses power so the system is just overworking and working harder and longer uh, during the cold and that really cuts in to your battery's overall capacity and what it can give you for just driving purposes sure you still have regen braking and things like that in the cold but it's so much more diminished in the cold than it is in the warm I think I went what 10 miles on this current drive and and I think I used 3%, 3.5% of my battery. I went from 79% down to 76 where I am right now. Um, and that's crazy. I usually get about 2 miles per 1%. So 100% battery capacity, I in my head, you know, kind of guesstimate around 200 miles plus of range, depending on uh, give and take highway or give and take back road speeds. So 3%, I went 10 miles. That's more than 3 miles per percent, which is just crazy. And my current usage, it says here, 2 kilowatt hours used since my last charge. I've gone 10 miles on 2 kilowatt hours. That is crazy. I usually only get about 3.5 four miles per kilowatt hour, I'm getting at least five right now. So that just demonstrates to you how much this car can still do under optimum temperature and optimum environment situations like today when it's 61 now, 61 degrees outside. The cold absolutely will impact your overall experience and you'll feel like you're charging more and you'll feel like, oh, maybe this isn't the right thing for me if you buy an EV in the winter and that's your first four months of experience is driving in the cold, you might be questioning, oh my God, what the hell did I do? But I'm telling you, just give it until the warm temperatures, give it until the spring, give it until the summer to really feel the uh, the benefits and the aha moment of owning an EV. They really do last so much longer and perform so much better than people give them credit for. But like on the weekends and you know maybe a longer weekend, like right now with the holidays between Christmas and New Year's, and I'm not driving as far to and from work, my battery will last four or five days before I have to even think about charging it. The takeaway I want you to have here is that even after a hundred thousand miles which let's be honest how many people keep their cars beyond a hundred thousand miles not many people but in an ev after a hundred and thousand 102 thousand miles almost my tesla has maintained 85% battery capacity. That is just crazy. 264 miles on a full charge out of an initial original 300 plus miles of available charge. So let's lay all those rumors to rest that batteries can't perform in the cold. Let's put a caveat on that. They can't perform as well in the cold. Your car will still run, will still do just fine in the cold. You'll just have to charge a little bit more often. But also real quick note, um, same with gas. Gas is not as efficient in the cold either. You lose miles per gallon in cold weather too. You just may not notice it as much because you know you weren't programmed from the beginning to think, oh my gosh, oh, I'm gonna be scared of cold weather. Yeah, not a thing. And guess what? It's cheap. It's cheap to maintain. There's no oil change. There's no belts. There's no crazy fluids to change out all the time. The brakes on this car, 102,000 miles are still original. I've never touched these brakes. Neither did any of the previous owners. They last forever because of that regen braking. So your maintenance costs are so, so low. The 
only thing I do routinely is rotate these tires and then get new tires after 50,000 miles or so. I have Bridgestone EV tires on this particular uh, car right now. So if you're thinking of getting a Tesla and going EV and going electric, please, please, please listen to me when I say that you do not have to be as worried as the naysayers and as the negativity online would make you and lead you to believe. It is not true. You do not have to be that scared of owning and driving a Tesla. So if you're thinking of going EV and going Tesla, use my referral link below whenever you go through the purchase process. Let me know in the comments below what your car is at, what how many miles you have. I'm gonna keep this thing until it kind of dies. Um, whenever it needs a battery replaced, I'll probably not replace it. I'll just get a new car at that point. But let me know what other kind of videos you wanna see, what other things you wanna talk about here on the channel. I would love to explore new options and new tests and new kind of stats to share with you all. Make sure you are subscribed below, like this video if you found it helpful, and we'll see you on the next one.